All right, this next unit deals with what are called gases. And gases are things that you find quite a bit in chemistry. Think about the gases around you in the air right now. As you breathe, you need those gases to stay alive. As you breathe out, you're releasing different gases into the atmosphere. Lots of different things going on with gases. So just a few things, just some basic characteristics about gases first to start. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the difference between what's a gas and what's what's called a vapor. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the pressure of a gas and the temperature of a gas. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about some of the characteristics. Anytime you put a gas into a container, it will always fill up the whole container. It might be pretty spread out, but it will fill up the entire container in which they're found in. So it's going to occupy the volume and the shape of the container that they're found in. The nice thing about gases too is you can really, really compress them. Okay, and so you can take, for example, you have a, an oxygen tank that sometimes people need or sometimes you see them in sports games where a person will put an oxygen mask over their face. Okay, you can compress that gas a whole bunch. So as it comes out, only a little bit of the gas is coming out compared to all of the gas that's in there. Sometimes you can even compress a gas so much that it will turn into a liquid. Think about your propane tank. If you have a little five gallon propane tank, when you fill it up, if you pick it up and, and shake it around a little bit, you can hear the liquid inside of it. But then when you open the nozzle and you light your barbecue with it, it comes out as a gas. Okay, so sometimes gases can be compressed so much that they'll actually even turn into a liquid. Okay, they're very, very low density compared to solids or liquids but they do mix completely, which means if you take a variety of different gases and put them all together, they're gonna to mix and form, remember we learned about this in chemistry one, it's gonna form a homogeneous mixture such as air, okay? Now the difference between, and, and again, none of this isn't stuff you need to memorize, just stuff to kind of help you when you think about a gas, what you, what you might picture in your mind. So what's the difference between a gas and a vapor? A gas is something that is just a gas under normal temperature and pressure. So when you're at a normal temperature, which is usually about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which again, we're not gonna really use in science. It's, it's right about 25 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a minute. Okay, and pressure uh, is about normal atmospheric pressure. So the pressure you feel right now Things that are gases are, are at normal temperature and pressure. A vapor is something that's not normally a gas at normal temperature and pressure. For example, water, you don't ever hear about water gas, but oftentimes you might hear the term water vapor. Okay, and the reason it's called vapor is because water at normal room temperature and pressure is a liquid. Okay, it's obviously in the liquid form. Uh, only when you it evaporates or you boil it does it turn into a gas so we call that a vapor okay now moving on uh, when you talk about the pressure of a gas okay the pressure of something like if you push on something you're putting pressure on it okay I know your parents do that a lot they put a lot of pressure on you to do good in school and be there for all of your classes and all that stuff this is a different type of pressure, but it's pretty similar, is it's basically the gases are pushing on the walls of the container. Now in America, we use what are called PSI, okay, pounds per square inch. But again, we're America and we don't quite do the things that everybody else does in the world. Okay, the large majority of the world, other than the United States, uses a different measure. Just like we use Fahrenheit and most of the world uses Celsius, it's the same thing, okay? We use pounds per square inch. You know, your car tire, you might blow your car tire up to 40 PSI, maybe your bike tire up to 50 PSI, but in the rest of the world, they don't use pounds and they don't use inches. So they certainly don't use PSI, okay? The main version that you'll see, the main unit of pressure that you'll see is what are called atmospheres, okay? And atmospheres is, again, abbreviated by, the, by ATM, and again, it's the most used pressure unit throughout the world, okay? When you go to, for example, Switzerland, let's say, and you know it'll tell you, like you buy a watch and the watch will say, you know, in America, it'll say, it'll be good up to 30 feet deep, okay? In Switzerland or something like that, it's gonna say, this watch will be able to withstand up to six atmospheres of pressure. And you're like, well, what the heck is atmospheres? 
Okay, that is the unit. It's like Celsius. It's the unit that most of the world uses for pressure. Okay, what is an atmosphere equal to? One atmosphere is equal to almost 15 PSI. So, and that right now, guys, you don't even notice it, but that's the pressure that's in the room around you right now. The normal atmospheric pressure is about one atmosphere or about 15 pounds per square inch. So there's air that's hitting your skin right now that's creating a pressure of about 15 pounds per square inch. Okay. Now, so one of the conversions that we need to know with, with pressure, you don't need to new, use that, know that 14.7 because we don't use pounds and we don't use inches in science. Okay. We do use atmospheres. We do use what are called millimeters. That's what that little M stands for millimeters of, and the symbol HG is the symbol for mercury. Okay. And the reason that we use mercury is because mercury is a liquid metal. Okay, <clears throat> and so it can move. Okay, a lot of times when they measure the atmospheric pressure, they use what's called a barometer. Okay, in the olden days, a barometer is something that had some mercury in it, and that mercury would move depending on how much air was basically in the air, which doesn't really make sense, but how much, how many particles of gases were in the air. And in a high pressure system, you would have a lot of air. And in a low pressure system, you wouldn't. And then a less common one, but also notice that it uses the same conversion as millimeters of mercury is what's called tor. So if something is 400 and has a pressure of 450 millimeters of mercury, it has a pressure of 450 tor. Okay, why the difference ones? That, that one I can't tell you. Those are just three very common different pressure units that we're gonna use and convert between in this class, okay? And when you know one of them, when you know one of these three, you've gotta be able to, to convert to the other two. Let me, and here's a, an example of a barometer right here. Here on the outside, or here on the inside, you can see, see those millimeters of mercury? That's how they're measuring. Another form of measuring, see it right there is HPA. We're not even gonna talk about that one, but the PA stands for what's called a Pascal, which you may learn about someday. Okay, so on a test, I'm gonna give you this and you're gonna to have to convert from one thing to something else. For example, if I give you 1,260 millimeters of mercury and I say put that into atmospheres, notice that what I do, this is the same stuff we've been doing all year. I've got millimeters of mercury on top, so I put my millimeters of mercury on the bottom. And then since they're asking me for atmospheres, I put atmospheres on the top and then in my calculator I just go 1260 divided by 760 and then you can see I get my answer of 1.66 okay in another example 0.145 atmospheres we want to convert that to tor so again notice we start with the number that's given us 0.145 atmospheres I put my one atmosphere on the bottom and then it wants to be converted to tor, so I put tor on the top, and then I take 0.145, I multiply by 760, and I get 110 tor. Okay, let's do a couple more examples here. Okay, but basically, as you can see by the examples above, when you're converting from one pressure unit to another, you're either gonna be dividing by 760 or multiplying by 760, unless you're simply going from millimeters of mercury to tor or backwards or vice versa. Okay, anytime you're going from millimeters of mercury to tor or from tor to millimeters of mercury, it's just the same thing. Okay, uh, and I don't know if I did any, yes, I did. I did one example like this. So look at example three here, 147.2 tor. To convert that to millimeters of mercury, notice I go 760 tor equals 760 millimeters of mercury. The tor cancels, so do the 760s. The answer is 147.2 tor. Okay, so anytime you're going just between tor and millimeters of mercury, it's the same answer. Okay, in these other two examples, it's not. We're going from tor to atmosphere in example one. So I'm going to go 840 tor 
And then the conversion is 760 torr equals one atmosphere. So now I just take 840. And in this case, because the 760 is on the bottom, I'm going to divide by 760. And I get 1.11 ATM, 1.11 atmospheres. So that's just a little bit above our normal atmospheric pressure. Okay. Now, obviously, as you go up in the in the sky, up like up Mount Everest or something like that, the air pressure gets lower. Okay. And as you get closer and closer to sea level, the air pressure gets higher. The, the, there's more particles of gas in the air at sea level than as you go farther and farther up into the atmosphere. And that's why many people who climb mountains have to use you know, they have to take extra oxygen because as you get higher and higher in the air, there's less oxygen in that space. And so your body has a hard time keeping up. Okay. So uh, example number two, we're going to take 0.954 atmospheres and we're going to convert that to millimeters of mercury. So we know the conversion is that one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury. Our atmospheres cancel. So now we take 0.954 and we multiply by 760 and we get 725 millimeters of mercury. So in general, when you're converting between one pressure unit or another, you're either going to be dividing by 760 or you're going to be multiplying by 760. You do have those rare cases where you're going between tor and millimeters of mercury. And look, I even, I even screwed up. You guys probably caught it and I didn't. That should have been millimeters of mercury. Okay, when you go between those two, when it happens to be the exact same number that you started with. But in general, when you're doing these problems, for the most part, you're going to be getting atmospheres. Okay, which means usually I'm going to give you millimeters of mercury or tor to start with. And then you've got to convert to atmospheres, just like we did here in example number one.